Ethiopia, Wikipedia Audio Coordinates, 8 degrees north 38 degrees east Slash 8 degrees north 38 degrees east Slash 8, 38 Ethiopia, officially the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, is a country located in the Horn of Africa. It shares borders with Eritrea to the north and northeast, Djibouti and Somalia to the east, Sudan and South Sudan to the west, and Kenya to the south. With over 102 million inhabitants, Ethiopia is the most populous landlocked country in the world and the second most populous nation on the African continent. It occupies a total area of 1,100,000 square kilometers and its capital and largest city is Addis Ababa. Some of the oldest skeletal evidence for anatomically modern humans has been found in Ethiopia. It is widely considered as the region from which modern humans first set out for the Middle East and places beyond. According to linguists, the first Afro-Asiatic speaking populations settled in the Horn region during the ensuing Neolithic era. Tracing its roots to the second millennium BC, Ethiopia's governmental system was a monarchy for most of its history. In the first centuries AD, the Kingdom of Aksum maintained a unified civilization in the region, followed by the Ethiopian Empire circa 1137. During the late 19th century scramble for Africa, Ethiopia was one of the nations to retain its sovereignty from long-term colonialism by a European colonial power. Many newly independent nations on the continent subsequently adopted its flag colors. Ethiopia was also the first independent member from Africa of the 20th Century League of Nations and the United Nations. In 1974, the Ethiopian monarchy under Haile Selassie was overthrown by the Derg, a communist military government backed by the Soviet Union. In 1987, the Derg established the People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, but it was overthrown in 1991 by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, which has been the ruling political coalition since. Nomenclature Ethiopia and Eritrea use the ancient GEEZ script, which is one of the oldest alphabets still in use in the world. The Ethiopian calendar, which is approximately seven years and three months behind the Gregorian calendar, CO exists alongside the Borana calendar. A majority of the population adheres to Christianity whereas around a third follows Islam. The country is the site of the migration to Abyssinia and the oldest Muslim settlement in Africa at Negesh. A substantial population of Ethiopian Jews, known as Bet Israel, also resided in Ethiopia until the 1980s. Ethiopia is a multilingual nation with around 80 ethno-linguistic groups, the four largest of which are the Oromo, Amhara, Somali, and Tigrayans. Most people in the country speak Afro-Asiatic languages of the Cushitic or Semitic branches. Additionally, Omotic languages are spoken by ethnic minority groups inhabiting the southern regions. Nilo-Saharan languages are also spoken by the nation's Nilotic ethnic minorities. Ethiopia is the place of origin of the coffee bean, which was first cultivated at Kifa, one of the 14 provinces in the old Ethiopian administration. It is a land of natural contrasts, with its vast fertile west, jungles and numerous rivers, and the world's hottest settlement of Dalal in its north. The Ethiopian highlands are the largest continuous mountain ranges in Africa and the Saf Omar Caves contains the largest cave on the continent. Ethiopia also has the most UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Africa. Additionally, 
the country is one of the founding members of the UN, the Group of 24, the Non-Aligned Movement, G77 and the Organization of African Unity. Its capital city Addis Ababa serves as the headquarters of the African Union, the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, the African Standby Force, and many of the global NGOs focused on Africa. In the 1970s and 1980s, Ethiopia experienced civil conflicts and communist purges which hindered its economy. The country has since recovered and now has the largest economy in East and Central Africa. According to Global Fire Power, Ethiopia also has the 41st most powerful military in the world, and the third most powerful in Africa. The Greek name? P. A is a compound word, derived from the two Greek words, from A. Plus, according to the Perseus Digital Library, the designation properly translates as burnt face in noun form and red brown in adjectival form. The historian Herodotus used the appellation to denote the parts of Africa below the Sahara that were then known within the Acumene. However, the Greek formation may be a folk etymology for the ancient Egyptian term Athtihuabu which means robbers of hearts. In Greco, Roman epigraphs, Ethiopia was a specific toponym for ancient Nubia. At least as early as c. 850, the name Ethiopia also occurs in many translations of the Old Testament in allusion to Nubia. The ancient Hebrew texts identify Nubia instead as Cush. However, in the New Testament, the Greek term Athiops does occur, referring to a servant of Candace or Candake, possibly an inhabitant of Mero in Nubia. Following the Hellenic and Biblical traditions, the Monumentum Adolatanum, a 3rd century inscription belonging to the Aksumite Empire, indicates that Aksum's then ruler governed an area which was flanked to the west by the territory of Ethiopia and Sesu. The Aksumite king Izana would eventually conquer Nubia the following century, and the Aksumites thereafter appropriated the designation Ethiopians for their own kingdom. In the GEEZ version of the Izana inscription, A. P. is equated with the unvocalized, BTM and, BST, and denotes for the first time the highland inhabitants of Aksum. This new demonym would subsequently be rendered as, B.S. in Sabaic and as, Abasha in Arabic. In the 15th century GEEZ Book of Aksum, the name is ascribed to a legendary individual called Idiopis. He was an extra-biblical son of Cush, son of Ham, said to have founded the city of Aksum. In English, and generally outside of Ethiopia, the country was once historically known as Abyssinia. This toponym was derived from the Latinized form of the ancient Habash. Several important finds have propelled Ethiopia and the surrounding region to the forefront of paleontology. The oldest hominid discovered to date in Ethiopia is the 4.2 million year old Artipithecus ramatus found by Tim D. White in 1994. The most well known hominid discovery is Australopithecus afarensis. Known locally as Dinkinch, the specimen was found in the Awash Valley of Ethiopia's Afar region in 1974 by Donald Johansson and is one of the most complete and best preserved adult Australopithecine fossils ever uncovered. Lucy's taxonomic name refers to the region where the discovery was made. The hominid is estimated to have lived 3.2 million years ago. Ethiopia is also considered one of the earliest sites of the emergence of anatomically modern humans, Homo sapiens. The oldest of these local fossil finds, the Omo remains, 
were excavated in the southwestern Omo Kaibish area and have been dated to the Middle Paleolithic, around 200,000 years ago. Additionally, skeletons of Homo sapiens idolta were found at a site in the middle Awash Valley. Dated to approximately 160,000 years ago, they may represent an extinct subspecies of Homo sapiens, or the immediate ancestors of anatomically modern humans. Homo sapiens fossils excavated at the Jebel Irhoud site in Morocco have since been dated to an earlier period, about 300,000 years ago. History According to linguists, the first Afro-Asiatic speaking populations arrived in the region during the ensuing Neolithic era from the families proposed Urimat in the Nile Valley, or the Near East. Other scholars propose that the Afro-Asiatic family developed in situ in the Horn, with its speakers subsequently dispersing from there. Craniometric analysis of the Herto Homo sapiens idol to skull found that the fossil was morphologically distinct from crania belonging to modern Afroasiatic speaking groups from the Horn of Africa and dynastic Egypt. The latter populations instead possessed Middle Eastern affinities. This suggests that the Afroasiatic speaking groups settled in the area during a later epoch, having possibly arrived from the Middle East. Around the 8th century BC, a kingdom known as D.M.T. was established in northern Ethiopia and Eritrea. The polity's capital was located at Yeha, in northern Ethiopia. Most modern historians consider this civilization to be a native Ethiopian one, although Sabian influenced because of the latter's hegemony of the Red Sea. Other scholars regard D. MT as the result of a union of Afro-Asiatic speaking cultures of the Cushitic and Semitic branches, namely, local Aga peoples and Sabaeans from South Arabia. However, GEEZ, the ancient Semitic language of Ethiopia, is thought to have developed independently from Sabian, one of the South Semitic languages. As early as 2000 BC, other Semitic speakers were living in Ethiopia and Eritrea where GEEZ developed. Sabian influence is now thought to have been minor, limited to a few localities, and disappearing after a few decades or a century. It may have been a trading or military colony in alliance with the Ethiopian civilization of D. M. T. or some other proto aksumite state. After the fall of D. MT during the 4th century BC, the Ethiopian plateau came to be dominated by smaller successor kingdoms. In the 1st century AD, the kingdom of Aksum emerged in what is now northern Ethiopia and Eritrea. According to the medieval book of Aksum, the kingdom's first capital, Mazabur, was built by Idiopes, son of Cush. Aksum would later at times extend its rule into Yemen on the other side of the Red Sea. The Persian religious figure Mani listed Aksum with Rome, Persia, and China as one of the four great powers of his era, during the 3rd century. Around 316 AD, Frumentius and his brother Edesius from Tyre accompanied their uncle on a voyage to Ethiopia. When the vessel stopped at a Red Sea port, the natives killed all the travelers except the two brothers, who were taken to the court as slaves. They were given positions of trust by the monarch, and they converted members of the royal court to Christianity. Frumentius became the first bishop of Aksum. A coin dated to 324 shows that Ethiopia was the second country to officially adopt Christianity, although the religion may have been at first confined to court circles, it was the first major power to do so. As the Aksumite kingdom gradually declined, one of the earliest local Muslim states, the Makhshumi Sultanate, was established in the Shua region. The polity was governed by the Makhshumi dynasty, 
which reigned over the province until it was deposed around 1280 by the Walishma dynasty. The first interaction that the Islamic prophet Muhammad had with Ethiopia was during the reign of A. Ama ibn Abjar, who was at the time the emperor of Aksum and gave refuge to several Muslims in the kingdom of Aksum in 614 AD. According to other authors, Ashama may have been the same person as King Arma, or his father or son. Tadesi Tumrit records that the inhabitants of Wikro, where the ruler is known as Ashamat al Negashi, claim that his tomb is located in their village. Prehistory Antiquity Muhammad's second interaction with Ethiopia was during the expedition of Zayd ibn Haritha, when he sent Amr bin Umayyah al-Damri to the king of Ethiopia. During Muhammad's era Middle Ages Aza Sultanate Zamina Mesafant From Manalik II to Adwa The Zagwa dynasty ruled many parts of present-day Ethiopia and Eritrea between the early 12th and late 13th century. The name of the dynasty is derived from the Cushitic-speaking Aga of northern Ethiopia. From 1270 AD until the Zamina Mesafant, the Solomonic dynasty governed the Ethiopian Empire. In the early 15th century, Ethiopia sought to make diplomatic contact with European kingdoms for the first time since the Aksumite era. A letter from Henry IV of England to the Emperor of Abyssinia survives. In 1428, Yashakai sent two emissaries to Alfonso V of Aragon who sent return emissaries. They failed to complete the return trip. The first continuous relations with a European country began in 1508 with Portugal under Dawit II, who had just inherited the throne from his father. This proved to be an important development, for when the empire was subjected to the attacks of the Adal Sultanate's general and imam, Ahmed ibn Ibrahim al-Ghazi, Portugal assisted the Ethiopian emperor by sending weapons and 400 men, who helped his son Galatuas defeat Ahmed and re-establish his rule. This Abyssinian Adal war was also one of the first proxy wars in the region, as the Ottoman Empire and Portugal took sides in the conflict. When Emperor Sisinius I converted to Roman Catholicism in 1624, years of revolt and civil unrest followed, resulting in thousands of deaths. The Jesuit missionaries had offended the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo faith of the local Ethiopians. In June 1632, Facilities, Sisinius' son, declared the state religion again to be the Ethiopian Orthodoxy. He expelled the Jesuit missionaries and other Europeans. Haile Selassie I era The Sultanate of Aza or Afar Sultanate succeeded the earlier Imamate of Aza. The latter polity had come into existence in 1577 when Muhammad Jasa moved his capital from Harar to Aza with the split of the Adal Sultanate into the Sultanate of Aza and the Sultanate of Harar. At some point after 1672, the Sultanate of Aza declined and temporarily came to an end in conjunction with Imam Umar Din bin Adam's recorded ascension to the throne. The Sultanate was subsequently re-established by Kedafu around the year 1734. It was thereafter ruled by his Mu'dato dynasty. The primary symbol of the Sultan was a silver baton, which was considered to have magical properties. Between 1755 and 1855, Ethiopia experienced a period of isolation referred to as the Zamina Mesafant or Age of Princes. The emperors became figureheads, 
controlled by warlords like Ras Mikhail Sihul of Tigray, Ras Woldes Selassie of Tigray, and by the Yeju Oromo dynasty, such as Ras Gugsa of Yeju, which later led to 17th century Oromo rule of Gondar, changing the language of the court from Amharic to Afan Oromo. Ethiopian isolationism ended following a British mission that concluded an alliance between the two nations, but it was not until 1855 that Ethiopia was completely united and the power in the emperor restored, beginning with the reign of Tudros II. Upon his ascent, he began modernizing Ethiopia and re-centralizing power in the emperor. Ethiopia began to take part in world affairs once again. But Tudros suffered several rebellions inside his empire. Northern Oromo militias, Tigrayan rebellion, and the constant incursion of Ottoman Empire and Egyptian forces near the Red Sea brought the weakening and the final downfall of Tudros II. He killed himself in 1868 during his last battle with the British expedition to Abyssinia. Emperor Tudros II was born in Bagumdur from a nobleman of Kura, where the Kura dialect of Aga language is spoken. After Tudros' death, Tekel Georgis II was proclaimed emperor. He was defeated in the battles of Zalau and Adua. Kasai was subsequently declared Johannes IV on January 21, 1872. In 1875 and 1876, Turkish-Egyptian forces, accompanied by many European and American advisers, twice invaded Abyssinia but were initially defeated, once at the Battle of Gundet losing 800 men, and then in the second invasion, decisively defeated by Emperor Johannes IV at the Battle of Gura on March 7, 1875, where the invading forces lost at least 3,000 men by death or captured. From 1885 to 1889, Ethiopia joined the Mahdiist war allied to Britain, Turkey, and Egypt against the Sudanese Mahdiist state. On March 10, 1889, Johannes IV was killed by the Sudanese Khalifa Abdullah's army whilst leading his army in the Battle of Gal Abat. Ethiopia in its roughly current form began under the reign of Menelik II, who was emperor from 1889 until his death in 1913. From his base in the central province of Shua, Menelik set out to annex territories to the south, east, and west, areas inhabited by the Oromo, Saitama, Guraj, Wilata, and other groups. He did this with the help of Ras Gobanadok S. Shawan Oromo militia, which occupied lands that had not been held since Ahmed ibn Ibrahim al Ghazi's war, as well as other areas that had never been under Ethiopian sovereignty. Menelik's campaign against Oromus outside his army was largely in retaliation for centuries of Oromo expansionism and the Zamina Mesafant, a period during which a succession of Oromo feudal rulers dominated the Highlanders. Chief among these was the Yeju dynasty, which included Alagaz of Yeju and his brother Ali I of Yeju. Ali I founded the town of Dibra Tabor in the Amhara region which became the dynasty's capital. Derg era Menelik was born from King Haelm Lakat of Shua and his mother Ajijaya Holima Adiamo who was a servant in the royal household. He had been born at Angolala in an Oromo area and had lived his first twelve years with Shawan Ormus with whom he thus had much in common. During his reign, Menelik II made advances in road construction, electricity, and education, the development of a central taxation system, and the foundation and building of the city of Addis Ababa which became capital of Shua province in 1881. After he ascended to the throne in 1889, it was renamed as Addis Ababa, the new capital of Abyssinia. 
Menelik had signed the Treaty of Wickel with Italy in May 1889 in which Italy would recognize Ethiopia's sovereignty so long as Italy could control an area north of Ethiopia. In return, Italy was to provide Menelik with weapons and support him as emperor. The Italians used the time between the signing of the treaty and its ratification by the Italian government to expand their territorial claims. This conflict erupted in the Battle of Adwa on March 1, 1896 in which Italy's colonial forces were defeated by the Ethiopians. Federal Democratic Republic About a third of the population died in the Great Ethiopian Famine. The early 20th century was marked by the reign of Emperor Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie I was born to parents from three of Ethiopia's Afro-Asiatic-speaking populations, the Oromo and Amhara, the country's two largest ethnic groups, as well as the Guraj. He came to power after V was deposed, and undertook a nationwide modernization campaign from 1916, when he was made a RAS and regent for the Empress Regnant, Zudatu, and became the de facto ruler of the Ethiopian Empire. Following Zudatu's death on November 2, 1930, he succeeded her as emperor. Politics Governance Human Rights the independence of Ethiopia was interrupted by the Second Italo-Ethiopian War, beginning when it was invaded by Fascist Italy in early October 1935, an Italian occupation of the country. During this time, Haile Selassie appealed to the League of Nations in 1935, delivering an address that made him a worldwide figure, and the 1935 Time Man of the Year. As the majority of the Ethiopian population lived in rural towns, Italy faced continued resistance and ambushes in urban centers throughout its occupation. Haile Selassie fled into exile in London and Mussolini was able to proclaim the Empire of Ethiopia and the assumption of the imperial title by the Italian King Vittorio Emmanuel III recognized by the countries belonging to the International Organization of the League of Nations. In 1937, the Italian massacre of Yekatite 12 occurred. This was when there were imprisonments and massacre of Ethiopians. This was because of a failed attempt to assassinate the Viceroy of Italian East Africa Rodolfo Graziani. Following the entry of Italy into World War II, British Empire forces, together with the Arbanak restored sovereignty of Ethiopia in the course of the East African Campaign in 1941. An Italian guerrilla campaign continued until 1943. This was followed by British recognition of Ethiopia's full sovereignty with the signing of the Anglo-Ethiopian Agreement in December 1944. On August 26, 1942, Haile Selassie issued a proclamation that removed Ethiopia's legal basis for slavery. Ethiopia had between 2 and 4 million slaves in the early 20th century, out of a total population of about 11 million. In 1952, Haile Selassie orchestrated the federation with Eritrea. He dissolved this in 1962 and illegally annexed Eritrea against the UN Federation Agreement, which resisted and finally won its war of independence. Haile Selassie played a leading role in the formation of the Organization of African Unity in 1963. Opinion within Ethiopia turned against Haile Selassie I owing to the worldwide oil crisis of 1973. This oil crisis caused a sharp increase in gasoline prices starting on February 13, 1974, food shortages, uncertainty regarding the succession, border wars, and discontent in the middle class created through modernization. 
The high gasoline prices motivated the taxi drivers and teachers to go on strike on February 18, 1974, and students and workers in Addis Ababa began demonstrating against the government on February 20, 1974. The feudal oligarchical cabinet of Akilohab Wolde was toppled, and a new government was formed with Indelka Kumakoen serving as Prime Minister. Haile Selassie's reign came to an end on September 12, 1974, when he was deposed by the Derg, a Soviet-backed Marxist-Leninist military dictatorship led by Mengistu Haile Mariam. The new Provisional Military Administrative Council established a one-party communist state which was called People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia in March 1975. The ensuing regime suffered several coups, uprisings, wide-scale drought and a huge refugee problem. In 1977, Somalia, which had been receiving assistance and arms from the USSR, invaded Ethiopia in the Ogaden War, capturing part of the Ogaden region. Ethiopia recovered it after it began receiving massive military aid from the USSR, Cuba, South Yemen, East Germany, and North Korea. This included around 15,000 Cuban combat troops. Between 1977-78, up to 500,000 were killed as a result of the Red Terror, from forced deportations, or from the use of hunger as a weapon under Mengistu's rule. The Red Terror was carried out in response to what the Derg termed as the White Terror, a chain of violent events, assassinations and killings carried out by what it called petty bourgeois reactionaries who desired a reversal of the 1974 revolution. The 1983-85 famine in Ethiopia affected around 8 million people, resulting in 1 million dead. Insurrections against communist rule sprang up, particularly in the northern regions of Eritrea and Tigray. In 1989, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front merged with other ethnically based opposition movements to form the coalition known as the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. Concurrently, the Soviet Union began to retreat from building world communism under Mikhail Gorbachev's glasnost and perestroika policies, marking a dramatic reduction in aid to Ethiopia from socialist bloc countries. This resulted in more economic hardship and the collapse of the military in the face of determined onslaughts by guerrilla forces in the north. The collapse of socialism in general, and in Eastern Europe during the revolutions of 1989, coincided with the Soviet Union stopping aid to Ethiopia altogether in 1990. The strategic outlook for Mengistu quickly deteriorated. In May 1991, Epard forces advanced on Addis Ababa and the Soviet Union did not intervene to save the government's side. Mengistu fled the country and was granted asylum in Zimbabwe, where he still resides. In 2006, after a trial that lasted 12 years, Ethiopia's Federal High Court in Addis Ababa found Mengistu guilty of genocide in absentia. Numerous other top leaders of his regime were also found guilty of war crimes. Mengistu and others who had fled the country were tried and sentenced in absentia. Numerous former officials received the death sentence and tens of others spent the next 20 years in jail, before being pardoned from life sentences. In July 1991, Epard convened a national conference to establish the transitional government of Ethiopia composed of an 87-member council of representatives and guided by a national charter that functioned as a transitional constitution. In June 1992, the Oromo Liberation Front withdrew from the government, in March 1993, Members of the Southern Ethiopia People's Democratic Coalition also left the government. 
In 1994, a new constitution was written that established a parliamentary republic with a bicameral legislature and a judicial system. The first multi-party election took place in May 1995, which was won by the EPERDF. The president of the transitional government, EPERDF leader Melis Zanawi, became prime minister, and Negaso Gidada was elected president. In May 1998, a border dispute with Eritrea led to the Eritrean-Ethiopian War, which lasted until June 2000 and cost both countries an estimated $1 million a day. This had a negative effect on Ethiopia's economy, but strengthened the ruling coalition. Ethiopia's third multi-party election on May 15, 2005 was highly disputed with some opposition groups claiming fraud. Though the Carter Center approved the pre-election conditions, it expressed its dissatisfaction with post-election events. European Union election observers continually accused the ruling party of vote rigging. The opposition parties gained more than 200 parliamentary seats, compared with just 12 in the 2000 elections. While most of the opposition representatives joined the parliament, some leaders of the Qud party who refused to take up their parliamentary seats were accused of inciting the post-election violence and were imprisoned. Amnesty International considered them prisoners of conscience and they were subsequently released. A coalition of opposition parties and some individuals was established in 2009 to oust the regime of the EPERDF in legislative elections of 2010. Meli's party, which has been in power since 1991, published its 65-page manifesto in Addis Ababa on October 10, 2009. The opposition won most votes in Addis Ababa but the EPERD halted counting of votes for several days. After it ensued, it claimed the election, amidst charges of fraud and intimidation. Some of the eight member parties of the Madrek include the Oromo Federalist Congress, the Arena Tigre, the Unity for Democracy and Justice, and the Coalition of Somali Democratic Forces. In mid-2011, Two consecutively missed rainy seasons precipitated the worst drought in East Africa seen in 60 years. Full recovery from the drought's effects did not occur until 2012, with long-term strategies by the national government in conjunction with development agencies believed to offer the most sustainable results. Melis died on August 20, 2012 in Brussels where he was being treated for an unspecified illness. Deputy Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Salen was appointed as a new Prime Minister until the 2015 elections, and remained so afterwards with his party in control of every parliamentary seat. Protests broke out across the country on August 5, 2016 and dozens of protesters were subsequently shot and killed by police. The protesters demanded an end to human rights abuses, the release of political prisoners, a fairer redistribution of the wealth generated by over a decade of economic growth, and a return of Walkite district to the Amhara region. The events were the most violent crackdown against protesters in sub-Saharan Africa since the Ethiopian regime killed at least 75 people during protests in the Oromia region in November and December 2015. Following these protests, Ethiopia declared a state of emergency on October 6, 2016. The state of emergency was lifted in August 2017. On February 16, 2018, the government of Ethiopia declared a six-month nationwide state of emergency following the resignation of Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Salen. The politics of Ethiopia takes place in a framework of a federal parliamentary republic 
whereby the Prime Minister is the head of government. Executive power is exercised by the government. Federal legislative power is vested in both the government and the two chambers of parliament. On the basis of Article 78 of the 1994 Ethiopian Constitution, the judiciary is completely independent of the executive and the legislature. The current realities of this provision are questioned in a report prepared by Freedom House. According to the Democracy Index published by the United Kingdom-based Economist Intelligence Unit in late 2010, Ethiopia is an authoritarian regime, ranking as the 118th most democratic out of 167 countries. Ethiopia has dropped 12 places on the list since 2006, and the latest report attributes the drop to the government's crackdown on opposition activities, media, and civil society before the 2010 parliamentary election, which the report argues has made Ethiopia a de facto one-party state. In July 2015, during a trip that then U.S. President Obama took to Kenya and Ethiopia, he highlighted the role of Ethiopia in the fight against Islamic terrorism. President Obama was the first sitting United States president to visit Ethiopia. The election of Ethiopia's 547-member Constituent Assembly was held in June 1994. This assembly adopted the constitution of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia in December 1994. The elections for Ethiopia's first popularly chosen national parliament and regional legislatures were held in May and June 1995. Most opposition parties chose to boycott these elections. There was a landslide victory for the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. International and non-governmental observers concluded that opposition parties would have been able to participate had they chosen to do so. The current government of Ethiopia was installed in August 1995. The first president was Negaso Gidada. The Epert fled government of Prime Minister Meles Zenawi promoted a policy of ethnic federalism, devolving significant powers to regional, ethnically based authorities. Ethiopia today has nine semi-autonomous administrative regions that have the power to raise and spend their own revenues. Under the present government, some fundamental freedoms, including freedom of the press, are circumscribed. Citizens have little access to media other than the state-owned networks, and most private newspapers struggle to remain open and suffer periodic harassment from the government. At least 18 journalists who had written articles critical of the government were arrested following the 2005 elections on genocide and treason charges. The government uses press laws governing libel to intimidate journalists who are critical of its policies. Meli's government was elected in 2000 in Ethiopia's first ever multi-party elections, however, the results were heavily criticized by international observers and denounced by the opposition as fraudulent. The Epardf also won the 2005 election returning Meli's to power. Although the opposition vote increased in the election, both the opposition and observers from the European Union and elsewhere stated that the vote did not meet international standards for fair and free elections. Ethiopian police are said to have massacred 193 protesters, mostly in the capital Addis Ababa, in the violence following the May 2005 elections in the Ethiopian police massacre. The government initiated a crackdown in the provinces as well, in Oromia state the authorities used concerns over insurgency and terrorism to use torture, imprisonment, and other repressive methods to silence critics following the election, particularly people sympathetic to the registered opposition party Oromo National Congress.
the government has been engaged in a conflict with rebels in the Ogaden region since 2007. The biggest opposition party in 2005 was the Coalition for Unity and Democracy. After various internal divisions, most of the Qud party leaders have established the new Unity for Democracy and Justice party led by Judge Bertukin Medexa. A member of the country's Oromo ethnic group, Ms. Bertukin Medexa is the first woman to lead a political party in Ethiopia. In 2008, the top five opposition parties were the Unity for Democracy and Justice led by Judge Bertukin Medexa. United Ethiopian Democratic Forces led by Dr. Bayin Petros, Oromo Federalist Democratic Movement led by Dr. Bolcha Dimiksa, Oromo People's Congress led by Dr. Mirara Gudina, and United Ethiopian Democratic Party Methin Party led by Lido Ayelu. After the 2015 elections, Ethiopia lost its single remaining opposition MP, there are now no opposition MPs in the Ethiopian parliament. Recent human rights violations include the killing of 100 peaceful protesters by direct government gunfire in the Oromo and Amhara regions in 2016. The UN has called for UN observers on the ground in Ethiopia to investigate this incident, however the EPERDF dominated Ethiopian government has refused this call. The protesters are protesting land grabs and lack of basic human rights such as the freedom to elect their representatives. The TPLF-dominated EPERDF won 100% in an election marked by fraud which has resulted in Ethiopian civilians protesting on scale unseen in prior post-election protests. Mirara Gudina, leader of the Oromo People's Congress said the East African country was at a crossroads. People are demanding their rights, he said. People are fed up with what the regime has been doing for a quarter of a century. They're protesting against land grabs, reparations, stolen elections, the rising cost of living, many things. If the government continue to repress while the people are demanding their rights in the millions that is one of the likely scenarios, Mirara said in an interview with Reuters. According to surveys in 2003 by the National Committee on Traditional Practices in Ethiopia, marriage by abduction accounts for 69% of the nation's marriages with around 80% in the largest region, Oromia, and as high as 92% in the southern nations, nationalities, and people's region. Homosexual acts are illegal in Ethiopia. Among the Omotic Karo-speaking and Hammer peoples in southern Ethiopia, adults and children with physical abnormalities are considered to be Minji, ritually impure. The latter are believed to exert an evil influence upon others, disabled infants have traditionally been murdered without a proper burial. The Karo officially banned the practice in July 2012. In 2013, the Oakland Institute released a report accusing the Ethiopian government of forcing the relocation of hundreds of thousands of indigenous people from their lands in the Gambala region. The report describes the Ethiopian government's plans to move over 1.5 million people by the end of 2013, in order to allow foreign investors to develop the land for large-scale industrial agriculture. According to several reports by the organization, those who refused were the subject of a variety of intimidation techniques including physical and sexual abuse, which sometimes led to deaths. A similar 2012 report by Human Rights Watch also describes the Ethiopian government's 2010-2011 villagization program in Gambela with plans to carry out similar resettlements in other regions. The Ethiopian government has denied the accusations of land grabbing and instead pointed to the positive trajectory of the country's economy as evidence of the development program's benefits.
Before 1996, Ethiopia was divided into 13 provinces, many derived from historical regions. The nation now has a tiered governmental system consisting of a federal government overseeing ethnically based regional states, zones, districts, and cabels. Administrative Divisions Since 1996, Ethiopia has been divided into nine ethnically based and politically autonomous regional states and two chartered cities, the latter being Addis Ababa and Dair Dawa. The Kili Lok are subdivided into 68 zones, and then further into 550 wardas and several special wardas. The constitution assigns extensive power to regional states, which can establish their own government and democracy according to the federal government's constitution. Each region has at its apex a regional council where members are directly elected to represent the districts and the council has legislative and executive power to direct internal affairs of the regions. Article 39 of the Ethiopian Constitution further gives every regional state the right to secede from Ethiopia. There is debate, however as to how much of the power guaranteed in the constitution is actually given to the states. The councils implement their mandate through an executive committee and regional sectoral bureaus. Such elaborate structure of council, executive and sectoral public institutions is replicated to the next level. At 1,126,829 square kilometers, Ethiopia is the world's 27th largest country, comparable in size to Bolivia. It lies between the 3rd parallel north and the 15th parallel north and longitudes 33rd meridian east and 48th meridian east. The major portion of Ethiopia lies on the Horn of Africa, which is the easternmost part of the African landmass. Bordering Ethiopia are Sudan and South Sudan to the west, Djibouti and Eritrea to the north, Somalia to the east and Kenya to the south. Within Ethiopia is a vast highland complex of mountains and dissected plateaus divided by the Great Rift Valley, which runs generally southwest to northeast and is surrounded by lowlands, steppes or semi-desert. The great diversity of terrain determines wide variations in climate, soils, natural vegetation, and settlement patterns. Geography Ethiopia is an ecologically diverse country, ranging from the deserts along the eastern border to the tropical forests in the south to extensive Afromontane in the northern and southwestern parts. Lake Tana in the north is the source of the Blue Nile. It also has a large number of endemic species, notably the gelata, the Walia ibex and the Ethiopian wolf. The wide range of altitude has given the country a variety of ecologically distinct areas, and this has helped to encourage the evolution of endemic species in ecological isolation. The predominant climate type is tropical monsoon, with wide topographic induced variation. The Ethiopian highlands cover most of the country and have a climate which is generally considerably cooler than other regions at similar proximity to the equator. Most of the country's major cities are located at elevations of around 2,0002,500 m above sea level, including historic capitals such as Gondar and Aksum. Climate The modern capital Addis Ababa, is situated on the foothills of Mount Entito at an elevation of around 2,400 meters. It experiences a mild climate year-round. With temperatures fairly uniform year-round, the seasons in Addis Ababa are largely defined by rainfall, a dry season from October to February, a light rainy season from March to May and a heavy rainy season from June to September. The average annual rainfall is approximately 1,200 mm. 
there are on average 7 hours of sunshine per day. The dry season is the sunniest time of the year, though even at the height of the rainy season in July and August there are still usually several hours per day of bright sunshine. The average annual temperature in Addis Ababa is 16 degrees Celsius, with daily maximum temperatures averaging 20-25 degrees C throughout the year, and overnight lows averaging 5-10 degrees C. Environment Wildlife Most major cities and tourist sites in Ethiopia lie at a similar elevation to Addis Ababa and have a comparable climate. In less elevated regions, particularly the lower-lying Ethiopian xeric grasslands and shrublands in the east of the country, the climate can be significantly hotter and drier. Dalal, in the Danakil depression in this eastern zone, has the world's highest average annual temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. Ethiopia has 31 endemic species of mammals. The African wild dog prehistorically had widespread distribution in the territory. However, with last sightings at Finicha, this canid is thought to be potentially locally extinct. The Ethiopian wolf is perhaps the most researched of all the endangered species within Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a global center of avian diversity. To date more than 856 bird species have been recorded in Ethiopia, 20 of which are endemic to the country. 16 species are endangered or critically endangered. A large number of these birds feed on butterflies like the Bicyclus anunana. Deforestation Economy Energy and hydropower Agriculture Exports Transportation Demographics Languages Script Religion Urbanization Rural and urban life Health Education Culture Naming Historically, throughout the African continent, wildlife populations have been rapidly declining due to logging, civil wars, pollution, poaching, and other human factors. A 17-year-long civil war along with severe drought, negatively impacted Ethiopia's environmental conditions, leading to even greater habitat degradation. Habitat destruction is a factor that leads to endangerment. When changes to a habitat occur rapidly, animals do not have time to adjust. Human impact threatens many species with greater threats expected as a result of climate change induced by greenhouse gases. With carbon dioxide emissions in 2010 of 6,494,000 tons, Ethiopia contributes just 0.02% to the annual human-caused release of greenhouse gases. Ethiopia has a large number of species listed as critically endangered, endangered, and vulnerable to global extinction. The threatened species in Ethiopia can be broken down into three categories, critically endangered, endangered, and vulnerable. Ethiopia is one of the eight fundamental and independent centers of origin for cultivated plants in the world. However, Deforestation is a major concern for Ethiopia as studies suggest loss of forest contributes to soil erosion, loss of nutrients in the soil, loss of animal habitats, and reduction in biodiversity. At the beginning of the 20th century, around 420,000 km2 of Ethiopia's land was covered by trees but recent research indicates that forest cover is now approximately 11.9% of the area. 
Ethiopia loses an estimated 1,410 km2 of natural forest each year. Between 1990 and 2005 the country lost approximately 21,000 km2 of forest. Current government programs to control deforestation consist of education, promoting reforestation programs, and providing raw materials which are alternatives to timber. In rural areas the government also provides non-timber fuel sources and access to non-forested land to promote agriculture without destroying forest habitat. Organizations such as SOS and Farm Africa are working with the federal government and local governments to create a system of forest management. Working with a grant of approximately 2.3 million euros, the Ethiopian government recently began training people on reducing erosion and using proper irrigation techniques that do not contribute to deforestation. This project is assisting more than 80 communities. According to the IMF, Ethiopia was one of the fastest growing economies in the world, registering over 10% economic growth from 2004 through 2009. It was the fastest growing non oil dependent African economy in the years 2007 and 2008. In 2015, the World Bank highlighted that Ethiopia had witnessed rapid economic growth with real domestic product growth averaging 10.9% between 2004 and 2014. In 2008 and 2011, Ethiopia's growth performance and considerable development gains were challenged by high inflation and a difficult balance of payments situation. Inflation surged to 40% in August 2011 because of loose monetary policy, large civil service wage increase in early 2011, and high food prices. For 2011-12, End-year inflation was projected to be about 22%, and single-digit inflation is projected in 2012-13 with the implementation of tight monetary and fiscal policies. In spite of fast growth in recent years, GDP per capita is one of the lowest in the world, and the economy faces a number of serious structural problems. However, with a focused investment in public infrastructure and industrial parks, Ethiopia's economy is addressing its structural problems to become a hub for light manufacturing in Africa. Calendar The Ethiopian constitution defines the right to own land as belonging only to the state and the people, but citizens may lease land, and are unable to mortgage or sell. Renting of land for a maximum of 20 years is allowed and this is expected to ensure that land goes to the most productive user. Land distribution and administration is considered an area where corruption is institutionalized, and facilitation payments as well as bribes are often demanded when dealing with land-related issues. As there is no land ownership, Infrastructural projects are most often simply done without asking the land users, which then end up being displaced and without home or land. A lot of anger and distrust sometimes results in public protests. In addition, agricultural productivity remains low, and frequent droughts still beset the country, also leading to internal displacement. Ethiopia has 14 major rivers, which flow from its highlands, including the Nile. The country has the largest water reserves in Africa. As of 2012, hydroelectric plants represented around 88.2% of the total installed electricity capacity. The remaining electrical power was generated from fossil fuels and other renewable sources. The electrification rate for the total population in 2013 was 24%, with 85% coverage in urban areas and 10% coverage in rural areas. 
As of 2014, total electricity production was 9.5 billion kilowatt hour and consumption was 6.7 billion kilowatt hour. There were 1.1 billion kilowatt hour in electricity exports, 0 kilowatt hour in electricity imports and 2.4 million kW of installed generating capacity. Ethiopia delivers roughly 81% of water volume to the Nile through the river basins of the Blue Nile, Sobat River, and Atbara. In 1959, Egypt and Sudan signed a bilateral treaty, the 1959 Nile Waters Agreement, which gave both countries exclusive maritime rights over the Nile waters. Ever since, Egypt under international law vetoed almost all projects in Ethiopia that sought to utilize the local Nile tributaries. This had the effect of discouraging external financing of hydropower and irrigation projects in western Ethiopia, thereby impeding water resource-based economic development projects. However, Ethiopia is in the process of constructing a large 6,450 MW hydroelectric dam on the Blue Nile River. When completed, this Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is slated to be the largest hydroelectric power station on the continent. The Jibe 3 hydroelectric project already generates an estimated 1,870 MW. Time. Agriculture constitutes around 85% of the labor force. However, the service sector represents the largest portion of the GDP. Many other economic activities depend on agriculture, including marketing, processing, and export of agricultural products. Production is overwhelmingly by small scale farmers and enterprises and a large part of commodity exports are provided by the small agricultural cash crop sector. Principal crops include coffee, legumes, oil seeds, cereals, potatoes, sugarcane, and vegetables. Exports are almost entirely agricultural commodities, and coffee is the largest foreign exchange earner. Ethiopia is Africa's second biggest maize producer. According to UN estimations the per capita GDP of Ethiopia has reached $357 as of 2011. The same report indicated that the life expectancy had improved substantially in recent years. The life expectancy of men is reported to be 56 years and for women 60 years. Cuisine Exports from Ethiopia in the 2009-2010 financial year totaled 1.4 billion US dollars. The country produces more coffee than any other nation on the continent. Ethiopia also has the fifth largest inventory of cattle. Other main export commodities are cot, gold, leather products, and oil seeds. Recent development of the floriculture sector means Ethiopia is poised to become one of the top flower and plant exporters in the world. Media Cross-border trade by pastoralists is often informal and beyond state control and regulation. In East Africa, over 95% of cross-border trade is through unofficial channels. The unofficial trade of live cattle, camels, sheep, and goats from Ethiopia sold to Somalia, Djibouti, and Kenya generates an estimated total value of between 250 and 300 million US dollars annually. This trade helps lower food prices, increase food security, relieve border tensions, and promote regional integration. However, the unregulated and undocumented nature of this trade runs risks, such as allowing disease to spread more easily across national borders. Furthermore, the government of Ethiopia is purportedly unhappy with lost tax revenue and foreign exchange revenues. 
recent initiatives have sought to document and regulate this trade. With the private sector growing slowly, designer leather products like bags are becoming a big export business, with Tato becoming the first luxury designer label in the country. Additional small-scale export products include cereals, pulses, cotton, sugarcane, potatoes, and hides. With the construction of various new dams and growing hydroelectric power projects around the country, Ethiopia also plans to export electric power to its neighbors. Coffee remains its most important export product and with new trademark deals around the world the country plans to increase its revenue from coffee. Most regard Ethiopia's large water resources and potential as its white oil and its coffee resources as black gold. Music The country also has large mineral resources and oil potential in some of the less inhabited regions. Political instability in those regions however, has inhibited development. Ethiopian geologists were implicated in a major gold swindle in 2008. Four chemists and geologists from the Ethiopian Geological Survey were arrested in connection with a fake gold scandal, following complaints from buyers in South Africa. Gold bars from the National Bank of Ethiopia were found by police to be gilded metal, costing the state around 17 million US dollars, according to the Science and Development Network website. In 2011, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam project was commenced. When completed, it will provide surplus energy in Ethiopia which will be available for export to neighboring countries. Sport Ethiopia has 926 km of electrified 1,435 mm standard gauge railways, 656 km for the Addis Ababa-Djibouti railway between Addis Ababa and the port of Djibouti and 270 km for the Awash-Haragebeyu railway between Addis Ababa and the twin cities of desi kambalka both railways are either in trial service or still under construction as of August 2017. Once commissioned and fully operational in 2018-2019, both railways will allow passenger transport with a designated speed of 120 km hour and freight transport with a speed of 80 km hour. Expected travel time from Addis Ababa to Djibouti City for passengers would be less than 12 hours and travel time from Addis Ababa to Desi slash Kambalka would be around 6 hours. World Heritage Sites in Ethiopia Beyond the first 270 km of the Awash Haragebeyu Railway, a second construction phase over 120 km foresees the extension of this railway from desi slash kambalka to haragebeya slash woldiya It is not clear, when this section will be built and opened. A third, northern 216 km long railway is also under construction between Mekele and Woldiya, but it is also not clear when this railway will be commissioned and opened. All railways are part of a future railway network of more than 5,000 km of railways, the National Railway Network of Ethiopia. As the first part of a 10-year road sector development program, between 1997 and 2002 the Ethiopian government began a sustained effort to improve its infrastructure of roads. As a result, as of 2015 Ethiopia has a total of 100,000 km of roads, both paved and gravel. Bibliography Ethiopia had 58 airports as of 2012, and 61 as of 2016. Among these, 
the Bol International Airport in Addis Ababa and the Abba Tenadi Jazz Match Yilma International Airport in Dire Dawa accommodate international flights. Ethiopian Airlines is the country's flag carrier, and is wholly owned by the government of Ethiopia. From its hub at the Bol International Airport, the airline serves a network of 102 international 20 domestic passenger, and 44 cargo, destinations. It is also one of the fastest growing carriers in the industry and continent. Ethiopia's population has grown from 33.5 million in 1983 to 87.9 million in 2014. The population was only about 9 million in the 19th century. The 2007 population and housing census results show that the population of Ethiopia grew at an average annual rate of 2.6% between 1994 and 2007, down from 2.8% during the period 1983-1994. Currently, the population growth rate is among the top 10 countries in the world. The population is forecast to grow to over 210 million by 2060, which would be an increase from 2011 estimates by a factor of about 2.5. The country's population is highly diverse, containing over 80 different ethnic groups. According to the Ethiopian National Census of 2007, the Oromo are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia at 34.4% of the nation's population. The Amhara represent 27.0% of the country's inhabitants, while Somalis and Tigrayans represent 6.22% and 6.08% of the population, respectively. Other prominent ethnic groups are as follows. Saitama 4.00%, Gurdj 2.52%, Wilata 2.27%, Afar 1.73%, Hadiya 1.72%, Gamo 1.49%, and others 12.6%. Afroasiatic speaking communities make up the majority of the population. Among these, Semitic speakers often collectively refer to themselves as the Habesha people. The Arabic form of this term is the etymological basis of Abyssinia, the former name of Ethiopia in English and other European languages. Additionally, Nilo-Saharan speaking ethnic minorities inhabit the southern regions of the country, particularly in areas of the Gambala region which borders South Sudan. The largest ethnic groups among these include the Nuer and Anuak. In 2009, Ethiopia hosted a population of refugees and asylum seekers numbering approximately 135,200. The majority of this population came from Somalia, Eritrea, and Sudan. The Ethiopian government required nearly all refugees to live in refugee camps. Languages of Ethiopia as of 2007 Census According to Ethnologue, there are 90 individual languages spoken in Ethiopia. Most people in the country speak Afroasiatic languages of the Cushitic or Semitic branches. The former includes Oromifa, spoken by the Oromo, and Somali, spoken by the Somalis, the latter includes Amharic spoken by the Amhara, and Tigrinya, spoken by the Tigrayans. Together, these four groups make up about three-quarters of Ethiopia's population. Other Afroasiatic languages with a significant number of speakers include the Cushitic Sidamo, Afar, Hadiya and Aga languages, as well as the Semitic Gurij languages, Harari, Silti, and Argaba languages. Arabic, which also belongs to the Afroasiatic family, is likewise spoken in some areas. Additionally, 
Omotic languages are spoken by Omotic ethnic minority groups inhabiting the southern regions. Among these idioms are Eri, Bench, Dime, Dizen, Gamogofedoro, Mal, Hammer, and Woleta. Languages from the Nilo-Saharan family are also spoken by ethnic minorities concentrated in the southwestern parts of the country. These languages include Nuer, Anuak, Niang Gatam, Meijang, Suri, Mien, and Mursai. English is the most widely spoken foreign language, and is the medium of instruction in secondary schools. Amharic was the language of primary school instruction, but has been replaced in many areas by regional languages such as Oromifa, Somali, or Tigrinya. While all languages enjoy equal state recognition in the 1995 Constitution of Ethiopia, Amharic is recognized as the official working language of the federal government. The various regions of Ethiopia and chartered cities are free to determine their own working languages. Amharic is recognized as the official working language of Amhara region, Binishangulgumas, Southern Nations, Nationalities and Peoples region, Gambala region, Addis Abeba and Dair Dawa, while Afar, Harari, Oromifa, Somalia and Tigrinya are recognized as official working languages in their respective regions. In terms of writing systems, Ethiopia's principal orthography is the GEEZ script. Employed as an abugida for several of the country's languages, it first came into usage in the 6th and 5th centuries BC as an abjad to transcribe the Semitic GEEZ language. GEEZ now serves as the liturgical language of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church and Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church. During the 1980s, the Ethiopic character set was computerized. It is today part of the Unicode standard as Ethiopic, Ethiopic Extended, Ethiopic Supplement and Ethiopic Extended A. Other writing systems have also been used over the years by different Ethiopian communities. The latter include Bakri Sipolo S script for Oromifa. Religion in Ethiopia Ethiopia has close historical ties with all three of the world's major Abrahamic religions. In the 4th century, the Ethiopian Empire was one of the first in the world to officially adopt Christianity as the state religion. As a result of the resolutions of the Council of Chalcedon, in 451 the Miaphysites, which included the vast majority of Christians in Egypt and Ethiopia, were accused of monophysitism and designated as heretics under the common name of Coptic Christianity. While no longer distinguished as a state religion, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church remains the majority Christian denomination. There is also a substantial Muslim demographic, representing around a third of the population. Additionally, Ethiopia is the site of the first Hijra, a major emigration in Islamic history. A town in the Tigray region, Negesh is the oldest Muslim settlement in Africa. Until the 1980s, a substantial population of Beta Israel resided in Ethiopia. According to the 2007 National Census, Christians make up 62.8% of the country's population, Muslims 33.9%, practitioners of traditional faiths 2.6%, and other religions 0.6%. This is in agreement with the CIA World Factbook, which states that Christianity is the most widely practiced religion in Ethiopia. The ratio of the Christian to Muslim population has largely remained stable when compared to previous censuses conducted decades ago. Sunnis form the majority of Muslims with non-denominational Muslims being the second largest group of Muslims, and the Shia and Ahmadiyyas are a minority. 
Sunnis are largely Shafi'is or Salafi, and there are also many Sufi Muslims there. The large Muslim population in the northern Afar region has resulted in a Muslim separatist movement called the Islamic State of Afaria seeking a Sharia-compliant constitution. The Kingdom of Aksum was one of the first polities to officially embrace Christianity, when Frumentius of Tyre, called Fremnatos, or Abba Salama in Ethiopia, converted Emperor Izana during the 4th century. According to the New Testament, Christianity had entered Ethiopia even earlier, when an official in the Ethiopian royal treasury was baptized by Philip the Evangelist. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church is part of Oriental Orthodoxy. It is by far the largest Christian denomination, although a number of PNI churches have recently gained ground. Since the 18th century, a relatively small Ethiopian Catholic Church has existed in full communion with Rome, with adherents making up less than 1% of the total population. Islam in Ethiopia dates back to the founding of the religion in 622 when a group of Muslims were counseled by Muhammad to escape persecution in Mecca. The disciples subsequently migrated to Abyssinia via modern-day Eritrea, which was at the time ruled by Ashama ibn Abjar, a pious Christian emperor. Also, the largest single ethnic group of non-Arab Sahaba was that of the Ethiopians. A small ancient group of Jews, the Beta Israel, live in northwestern Ethiopia, though most immigrated to Israel in the last decades of the 20th century as part of the Israeli government's relocation missions, Operation Moses and Operation Solomon. According to the 2007 Population and Housing Census, around 1,957,944 people in Ethiopia are adherents of traditional religions. An additional 471,861 residents practice other creeds. While followers of all religions can be found in each region, they tend to be concentrated in certain parts of the country. Christians predominantly live in the northern Amhara and Tigray regions, and are largely members of the non chalcedonian Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church. Those belonging to PNI are centered in the southern nations, nationalities, and peoples region and Oromia. Muslims in Ethiopia predominantly adhere to Sunni Islam and generally inhabit eastern and northeastern areas, particularly the Somali, Afar, Dire Dawa and Harari regions. Practitioners of traditional religions mainly reside in the nation's far southwestern and western rural borderlands, in the SNNP, Benishan Gulgumas, and Gambala regions. Human rights groups have regularly accused the government of arresting activists, journalists, and bloggers to stamp out dissent among some religious communities. Lengthy prison terms were handed to 17 Muslim activists on August 3, 2015 ranging from 7 to 22 years. They were charged with trying to create an Islamic state in the majority Christian country. All the defendants denied the charges and claimed that they were merely protesting in defense of their rights. Population growth, migration, and urbanization are all straining both government's and ecosystem's capacity to provide people with basic services. Urbanization has steadily been increasing in Ethiopia, with two periods of significantly rapid growth. First, in 1936-1941 during the Italian occupation of Mussolini's fascist regime, and from 1967 to 1975 when the populations of urban centers tripled. In 1936, Italy annexed Ethiopia, building infrastructure to connect major cities, and a dam providing power and water. 
This along with the influx of Italians and laborers was the major cause of rapid growth during this period. The second period of growth was from 1967 to 1975 when rural populations migrated to urban centers seeking work and better living conditions. This pattern slowed due to the 1975 land reform program instituted by the government, which provided incentives for people to stay in rural areas. As people moved from rural areas to the cities, there were fewer people to grow food for the population. The Land Reform Act was meant to increase agriculture since food production was not keeping up with population growth over the period of 1970-1983. This program proliferated the formation of peasant associations, large villages based on agriculture. The act did lead to an increase in food production, Although there is debate over the cause, it may be related to weather conditions more than the Reform Act. Urban populations have continued to grow with an 8.1% increase from 1975 to 2000. Migration to urban areas is usually motivated by the hope of better lives. In peasant associations daily life is a struggle to survive. About 16% of the population in Ethiopia are living on less than $1 per day. Only 65% of rural households in Ethiopia consume the World Health Organization's minimum standard of food per day, with 42% of children under 5 years old being underweight. Most poor families share their sleeping quarters with livestock, and 40% of children sleep on the floor where nighttime temperatures average 5 degrees Celsius in the cold season. The average family size is 6 or 7, living in a 30 square meter mud and thatch hut, with less than 2 hectares of land to cultivate. The peasant associations face a cycle of poverty. Since the land holdings are so small, farmers cannot allow the land to lie fallow which reduces soil fertility. This land degradation reduces the production of fodder for livestock, which causes low milk yields. Since the community burns livestock manure as fuel, rather than plowing the nutrients back into the land, the crop production is reduced. The low productivity of agriculture leads to inadequate incomes for farmers, hunger, malnutrition, and disease. These unhealthy farmers have difficulty working the land and the productivity drops further. Although conditions are drastically better in cities, all of Ethiopia suffers from poverty and poor sanitation. However, poverty in Ethiopia fell from 44% to 29.6% during 2020-11, according to the World Bank. In the capital city of Addis Ababa, 55% of the population used to live in slums. Now, however, a construction boom in both the private and public sector has led to a dramatic improvement in living standards in major cities, particularly in Addis Ababa. Notably, government-built condominium housing complexes have sprung up throughout the city, benefiting close to 600,000 individuals. Sanitation is the most pressing need in the city, with most of the population lacking access to waste treatment facilities. This contributes to the spread of illness through unhealthy water. Despite the living conditions in the cities, the people of Addis Ababa are much better off than people living in the peasant associations owing to their educational opportunities. Unlike rural children, 69% of urban children are enrolled in primary school, and 35% of those are eligible to attend secondary school. Addis Ababa has its own university as well as many other secondary schools. The literacy rate is 82%. Many NGOs are working to solve this problem, however, most are far apart, uncoordinated, 
and working in isolation. The Sub-Saharan Africa NGO Consortium is attempting to coordinate efforts. The World Health Organization's 2006 World Health Report gives a figure of 1,936 physicians, which comes to about 2.6 per 100,000. Globalization is said to affect the country, with many educated professionals leaving Ethiopia for better economic opportunities in the West. Ethiopia's main health problems are said to be communicable diseases worsened by poor sanitation and malnutrition. Over 44 million people do not have access to clean water. These problems are exacerbated by the shortage of trained doctors and nurses and health facilities. The state of public health is considerably better in the cities. Birth rates, infant mortality rates, and death rates are lower in cities than in rural areas due to better access to education, medicines, and hospitals. Life expectancy is better in cities compared to rural areas, but there have been significant improvements witnessed throughout the country in recent years, the average Ethiopian living to be 62.2 years old, according to a UNDP report. Despite sanitation being a problem, use of improved water sources is also on the rise, 81% in cities compared to 11% in rural areas. As in other parts of Africa, there has been a steady migration of people towards the cities in hopes of better living conditions. There are 119 hospitals and 412 health centers in Ethiopia. Infant mortality rates are relatively high, as 41 infants die per 1,000 live births. Ethiopia has been able to reduce under 5 mortality by two-thirds since 1990 although this is a dramatic decrease. Birth-related complications such as obstetric fistula affect many of the nation's women. The HIV-AIDS prevalence rate in Ethiopia stood at 1.1% in 2014, a dramatic decrease from 4.5% 15 years ago the most affected are poor communities and women, due to lack of health education, empowerment, awareness and lack of social well-being. The government of Ethiopia and many private organizations like World Health Organization, and the United Nations, are launching campaigns and are working aggressively to improve Ethiopia's health conditions and promote health awareness on AIDS and other communicable diseases. Ethiopia has a relatively high infant and maternal mortality rate. Although, Ethiopia did not meet the MDG target of reducing maternal mortality rate by two-thirds in 2015, there are improvements nonetheless. For instance, the contraception prevalence rate increased from 8.1% in 2000 to 41.8% in 2014, and antenatal care service coverage increased from 29% to an astounding 98.1% in the same period. Currently, the maternal mortality rate stands at 420 per 100,000 live births. Only a minority of Ethiopians are born in hospitals, while most are born in rural households. Those who are expected to give birth at home have elderly women serve as midwives who assist with the delivery. The WHO estimates that a majority of maternal fatalities and disabilities could be prevented if deliveries were to take place at well-equipped health centers, with adequately trained staff. The low availability of healthcare professionals with modern medical training, together with lack of funds for medical services, leads to the preponderance of less reliable traditional healers that use home-based therapies to heal common ailments. One common cultural practice, irrespective of religion or economic status, is female genital mutilation, also known as female genital cutting a procedure that involves partial or total removal of the external female genitalia, 
or other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. The practice has been made illegal in Ethiopia in 2004. FGM is a premarital custom mainly endemic to Northeast Africa and parts of the Near East that has its ultimate origins in ancient Egypt. Encouraged by women in the community, it is primarily intended to deter promiscuity and to offer protection from assault. The country has a high prevalence of FGM, but prevalence is lower among young girls. Ethiopia's 2005 Demographic and Health Survey noted that the national prevalence rate is 74% among women ages 15-49. The practice is almost universal in the regions of Dair Dawa, Somali, and Afar. In the Oromo and Harari regions, more than 80% of girls and women undergo the procedure. FGC is least prevalent in the regions of Tigray and Gambala, where 29% and 27% of girls and women, respectively, are affected. According to a 2010 study performed by the Population Reference Bureau, Ethiopia has a prevalence rate of 81% among women ages 35 to 39 and 62% among women ages 15-19. A 2014 UNICEF report found that only 24% of girls under 14 had undergone FGM. Male circumcision is also practiced in the country, and about 76% of Ethiopia's male population is reportedly circumcised. The government of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia is signatory to various international conventions and treaties that protect the rights of women and children. Its constitution provides for the fundamental rights and freedoms for women. There is an attempt being made to raise the social and economic status of women through eliminating all legal and customary practices which hinder women's equal participation in society and undermine their social status. Education in Ethiopia was dominated by the Tewahedo Church for many centuries until secular education was adopted in the early 1900s. The current system follows school expansion schemes which are very similar to the system in the rural areas during the 1980s, with an addition of deeper regionalization providing rural education in students' own languages starting at the elementary level, and with more budget finances allocated to the education sector. The sequence of general education in Ethiopia is six years of primary school, four years of lower secondary school and two years of higher secondary school. Access to education in Ethiopia has improved significantly. Approximately 3 million people were in primary school in 1994-95, and by 2008-09, primary enrollment had risen to 15.5 million an increase of over 500%. In 2013-14, the country had witnessed significant boost in gross enrollment across all regions. The national GER was 104.8% for boys, 97.8% for girls and 101.3% across both sexes. The literacy rate has increased in recent years, according to the 1994 census, the literacy rate in Ethiopia was 23.4%. In 2007 it was estimated to be 39%. A report by UNDP in 2011 showed that the literacy rate in Ethiopia was 46.7%. The same report also indicated that the female literacy rate has increased from 27 to 39% from 2004 to 2011 and the male literacy rate has increased from 49 to 59 percent over the same period for persons 10 years and older. By 2015, the literacy rate had further increased, to 49.1 percent. 
Ethiopians have a different naming system to the family name based Western system. Children add the given names of their father and paternal grandfather consecutively to their own given name. For compatibility purposes, as is done in passports, the grandfather's given name is taken as a family surname, and a person's given name and his slash her father's given name form the first name. Everyone is addressed by his slash her given name. In official situations, the prefixes Ado is used for men, Waisro for married women, and Waisrit for unmarried women. Ethiopia has several local calendars. The most widely known is the Ethiopian calendar, also known as the GEEZ calendar. It is based on the older Alexandrian or Coptic calendar, which in turn derives from the Egyptian calendar. Like the Coptic calendar, the Ethiopian calendar has 12 months of exactly 30 days each plus 5 or 6 epigominal days, which comprise a 13th month. The Ethiopian months begin on the same days as those of the Coptic calendar, but their names are in GEEZ. Like the Julian calendar, the sixth epigominal day which in essence is a leap day is added every four years without exception on August 29th of the Julian calendar, six months before the Julian leap day. Thus, the first day of the Ethiopian year, one mascaram, four years between 1901 and 2099, is usually September 11th, but falls on September 12th in years before the Gregorian leap year. Also, a 7 to 8 year gap between the Ethiopian and Gregorian calendars results from an alternate calculation in determining the date of the Annunciation of Jesus. Another prominent calendrical system was developed around 300 BC by the Oromo. A lunar stellar calendar, this Oromo calendar relies on astronomical observations of the Moon in conjunction with seven particular stars or constellations. Oromo months are Bitadasa, Kamsa, Bufa, Waxabagii, Abaragutta, Abaradika, Bera, Sikawa, Sat, Abreza, Amagi, and Gurandala. Time in Ethiopia is counted differently from in many Western countries. The Ethiopian day is reckoned as beginning at 6 a.m. as opposed to 12 a.m., concurrently with sunrise throughout the year. To convert between the Ethiopian clock and Western clocks, one must add six hours to the Western time. For example, 2 a.m. local Addis Ababa time is called 8 at night in Ethiopia, while 8 p.m. is called 2 in the evening. The best known Ethiopian cuisine consists of various types of thick meat stews, known as wat in Ethiopian culture, and vegetable side dishes served atop injera, a large sourdough flatbread made of teff flour. This is not eaten with utensils but instead one uses the injera to scoop up the entrees and side dishes. Almost universally in Ethiopia, it is common to eat from the same dish in the center of the table with a group of people. It is also a common custom to feed others in your group with your own hands a tradition referred to as gursha. Traditional Ethiopian cuisine employs no pork or shellfish of any kind as they are forbidden in the Islamic, Jewish, and Ethiopian Orthodox faiths. Chechepsa, Marka, Chukko, Mikura, and Danga are the most popular dishes from the Oromo. Kitfo, which originated among the Guraj, is one of the country's most popular delicacies. In addition, Doro Wat is another popular food originated from the Amhara people of northwestern Ethiopia. Tilo which is a type of dumpling is prepared from roasted barley flour. It originated in the Tigray region, and is now very popular in Amhara and spreading further south. Ethiopian Broadcasting Corporation, formerly known as ETV, 
is the government-owned national channel. Other television stations in the country include Kana TV. The most widely circulated newspapers in Ethiopia are Addis Fortune, Capital Ethiopia, Ethiopian Reporter, Addis Zaman and Ethiopian Herald. The sole internet service provider is the national telecommunications firm Ethio Telecom. A large portion of users in the country access the internet through mobile devices. As of July 2016, there are around 4.29 million people who have internet access at their home as compared to a quarter of a million users a decade before that. The Ethiopian government has at times intentionally shut down internet service in the country or restricted access to certain social media sites during periods of political unrest. In August 2016, following protest and demonstration in the Oromia region, all access to the internet was shut down for a period of two days. In June 2017, the government shut down access to the Internet for mobile users during a period that coincided with the administration of the country's university entrance examination. Although the reason for the restriction was not confirmed by the government, the move was similar to a measure taken during the same period in 2016, after a leak of test questions. The music of Ethiopia is extremely diverse with each of the country's 80 ethnic groups being associated with unique sounds. Ethiopian music uses a distinct modal system that is pentatonic, with characteristically long intervals between some notes. As with many other aspects of Ethiopian culture and tradition, tastes in music and lyrics are strongly linked with those in neighboring Eritrea, Somalia, Djibouti, and Sudan. Traditional singing in Ethiopia presents diverse styles of polyphony. Traditionally, lyricism in Ethiopian songwriting is strongly associated with views of patriotism or national pride, romance, friendship, and a most unique type of memoir known as Tizata. The main sports in Ethiopia are track and field and football. Ethiopian athletes have won many Olympic gold medals in track and field, most of them in long-distance running. Haile Gabor Selassie is a world-renowned long-distance runner with several world records under his belt. Kanenisa Bekiel and Tyrunsh Baba are also dominant runners, particularly in the 5,000 and 10,000 meters in which they hold the world records. Other notable Ethiopian athletes are Abeba Baikula, Mama Woldet, Myrats Yifter, Dirar Tutulu, Misirat Defar, Almaz Ayana, Burhane Adara, Tiki Jelena, Jenzabi Dibaba, Taraka Bekil, and Jelat Borka. As of 2012 going into 2013, the current national Ethiopian football team has made itself history by qualifying for the 2012 African Cup of Nations and more recently by reaching the last 10 African football teams in the last stage of qualification for the 2014 FIFA World Cup. Noted players include Captain Adane Jerma and top scorer Saladin said. Ethiopia has Sub-Saharan Africa's longest basketball tradition as it established a national basketball team in 1949.